What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from iGeometry, where we discuss software engineering by example. In this video, we will uh, talk about how we can write Python script to talk and to interact with Postgres database. All right. So you would obviously to bring your Python scripts to live to build real applications, you will need to store some sort of state, right? You will need to talk to a database, you need to store some information, user data, anything, right? And database is the perfect thing to do these th sort of things, right? Almost any application out there uses a back end as a database. Postgres is a great open source database and it, we love it, all right? So in this video, we will go through uh, what do you need to do exactly to uh, basically uh, write a Python application from scratch, right? And then talk to a, uh, to a Postgres instance, right? So we're gonna describe how to read and how to write, the very basic commands, right? I don't wanna make the video very long, right? And bore you guys. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I, in, in this laptop here, I, I'm using a Mac, and I have Docker installed, and I spin up a Postgres instance and PG admin just to maintain uh, this Postgres instance. We talked all about that, how to do all of that from scratch in this video. I'm gonna I'm gonna reference it in the cards here somewhere. You can take a look at that, see how we can actually spin up Postgres instance on your machine without actually installing the database or worrying about that. You can spin up a container, uh, just do your stuff, test your stuff, develop, write applications, and then destroy the container, right? It's very simple stuff. It's, 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 I, I always recommend that to my students. All right, so let's just jump into it. Here I have a Postgres instance. I have two databases, okay? One database called Hussein DB, and I have a table called employees, and there are a bunch of records in that employees, and we're gonna just learn how to uh, display those in Python, right? So we can just, for example, display the name, okay? Very simple stuff, right? So let's start with from scratch. I'll be using Visual Studio Code because this is my favorite editor. I use it for every single scripting language out there. I use it for TypeScript, I use it for JavaScript, I use it for Python, right? I just like to use one thing for everything. It's makes things very, very, very easy, all right? I have Python installed. I'm not gonna go through that process because it's simple. You install Python 3, all right? I might uh, actually make a video on how to install Python and do all of that. Very simple, just install it and bleh, you're done. Okay, Visual Studio Code, uh, just the moment you create a Python file, it says, hey, by the way, let me install for you the extension and, and do IntelliSense and all that stuff. So I, I like Visual Studio Code because of that. So I was gonna go ahead and create a folder here, our project was called it Postgres Demo, right? Whatever we're gonna call this. So this is how we talk to Postgres. All right, so what we're gonna create is a Python file, and this file file is uh, I don't know what we're gonna call it db.py. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about, right? So the moment you create that, it says, hey, what's your Python interpreter? Give me which version you want to use. 3.7, 2.7. I'm gonna use 3.7. Okay. Uh, once you do that, the library that we're gonna use for Python, and this is my favorite library, I, 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 I dabbled a lot with a, a lot of other libraries, and this, I, this is by far is the most standard, easy to understand, and uh, it's like a, it's like based on the DB, uh, DB standard for a, a DB API. So it is called import. So I'm gonna butcher the name, okay? This is how I memorize libraries, okay? P for Python, Psycho, without an H, right? And Postgres 2, because the one sucked, right? This is the second version. To P Psycho, PG2, all right? Let me zoom so you can see it. Is that enough, guys? Can you actually see it now? Okay, <laughs> okay. So the first thing we need to do is actually connect, right? We establish a connection to the database, which happens to be called Hussein DB but it is sitting on my laptop, which is called Hussein Mac, right? That's the, just the, uh, the host name, okay? And so let's create a connection, how about that? Connection equal, this is how you do it, pcycopg2 dot, very hard, connect, duh, right? And to do that, we need to put a bunch of parameters here, okay? Uh, you need obviously the host, 
What's the host name that you connect it to? This is your could be Amazon, could be whatever, right? It's like uh, this. In this case, it's just my local machine. So Hussein Mac, okay, Hussein Kak, yeah, sure. All right. So second thing is what? What? What do we need? The database, right? Database Hussein DB. That's the database name. Remember, guys, it's this called Hussein DB. I'm gonna remember. I want to query this table. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. That's the second thing. Okay. This is, by the way, qu uh, keyword uh, arguments. So that's the cool thing about Python. I love it a lot. All right. So database Hussein DB. Okay. And uh, what else? What else? User. What are you connecting as? Okay. I'm gonna connect as Postgres, the default user here. But you can create a user and use that as well. And the password is very secure. Okay. Please do not look, guys. Okay. What? <laughs> What else? What else are we missing? So there's an optional port called port. Okay, if you if you're running your Postgres instance on a, a different port, not the default one, then you can specify that. The default one is four three two five four three two, right? But I'm not gonna. It's our optional thing. That's gonna we use. But if your instance is running on a different port, you want to specify that. All right. Uh, coolish, coolish. All right. Now I have a connection, okay? I like to, like, if you, if you establish a connection, right, just like uh, connect to the DB, this is where your session will start, right? So you'll start issuing queries, and then once you're done, you need to really close this thing, okay? Just release that stuff. Don't leak anything, guys. Just make it a habit, okay? Close the connection. All right, we close the connection, okay? So to interact with the database, Right, this library PsyCo PG2. I know I'm butchering the name. You guys are laughing. Okay, I don't know how to say it uh, otherwise. Okay, PsyCo PG2. Okay, is you need cursors, and cursors are the commands. Right, are are the the ve vessel in which you communicate to the database with. Okay, and how do we create a cursor? A cursor is created off your connection. So you will ask me to create a cursor, okay? And that will give me a cursor, okay? So create a cursor. And there are two types of cursors. There are client-side cursors and server-side cursors. And we can take a whole episode just to talk about those two. But in general, if you like a query, think about like querying a huge table, okay? And your application, right? Selecting, let's say everything, all right? In that table, okay? Uh, there are two types of cursor. You, there are client side cursors and there are server side cursors. Client side cursors are when you when you query, you essentially the client will basically allocate memory for the entire damn thing that you're querying. Okay, okay. So you you essentially pull everything from the server to the client, which is our little application here, and then start processing the stuff in the client. Okay. The other way, the other type of cursors is a server-side cursor. It says, you know what? It create that cursor, but leave it there. Don't give me anything until I ask you to. So you can call cursor dot give me one, give me one, give me one, give me another one. Just like you can you can loop through those cursors uh, uh, like by one by one. Okay. I started explaining this. I said I'm not gonna explain, but it's like so, so there are advantages, disadvantages for both, like right? performance. There's so like you can lose one and you get you get a lot of network traffic, but you get more memory, uh, like less memory footprint in your application, and otherwise it will give you like another like network bandwidth. Anyway, it's not it's not our topic. Sorry guys. Okay, let's go back to uh, to coding here. Okay, cursor, cursor. Let's zoom in here. What do we do? I'm gonna query cursor dot execute. I'm gonna execute a cursor that says uh, select ID and name. Do you remember that, guys? That's the two columns there from employees, right? Usually, that's basically a bad query, but for the sake of example, just let's say, right? You don't want to do an unbounded query like that. You always want to do a limit or just like give me the first one or second one, right? But uh, yeah, that's that's bad practice, guys. But we're learning here, okay? It's like as long as we're saying it, that we're good, right? Uh, execute the query, okay? And then 
uh, we want to return the rows. This will not return you the rows. This will execute the cursor. It will start do the do its things in the cursor, right? So what I'm gonna do in the cursor will do fetch. There are many fetches here. <laughs> Fun. Okay. There are many fetches. The 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 famous fetches fetch all. Give me everything. Give me everything tonight. What year is this? This is not 2019. This is 2000, apparently. All right. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Plus, this guy beats Rihanna, so we, we shouldn't sing his songs. All right. So, you loop through the rows. Very simple. All right. Uh, these will actually be tuples of, like, zero, whatever. Like, uh, the, the, the ID name. Okay. So, it will be an array of tuples. Like that, okay. That's what we're gonna get back, okay. And let's print our fancy print. Let's use fancy print, okay. I don't know if this is really called fancy print, I just made it up, guys. Okay, so R sub zero, and then we're gonna do the ID equal to I sub zero, and then we can do wait, that's JavaScript. Damn it, okay. Okay, yeah, JavaScript uses text like that. So I always get confused with them. Alright, let's see if this works. Alright, obviously, after you're done with the cursor, you also have to close the cursor. It's a completely different thing. Okay, guys, don't forget. Close the cursor. Close the cursor. Close the cursor. Don't leak things. Leaking is the worst. Leaking is the worst. Okay. Are we running? Are we running this thing? I think I forgot to mention what very important thing. Obviously, this library doesn't exist by default, right? So if I run, I'm expecting an error. Yep, it says I cannot find that. I cannot, I cannot find the psycho. So how to do that? You go to terminal, the same folder or anywhere really. Just use pip, pip install psycho. Remember, guys, p for Postgres, no for Python. Psycho, the movie. Postgres and the ver version one sucked, so the version two is better. Okay, that's how you do it. And then you debug and run again, and then just like that, we print ID name. Did, did. Cool. All right, guys, we just printed everything. Let's say if we don't lie, that looks like the names to me. Agent, let's zoom out so you can see them. That's the printing. That's that's what happened, right? We did ID, and then this, and then that. Okay. Cool, cool. Let's do one more thing. Let's do an uh, insert. How about that? Let's do an insert. Let's do an insert. Okay. So before we create the cursor to actually query, let's do the same cursor. That's the cool thing about it. You can use the same cursor. But this time we're going to insert. Insert into uh, employees. Right? I'm assuming, guys, you know just like basic SQL, right? Ask me if you have any questions, obviously. Right. I'm gonna reference also the the documentation. This is beautiful. They those guys have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful documentation. Beautiful. All right. It's a beautiful documentation. All right. Insert into employees, and then I'm gonna say ID and name. They do values. Okay, so to avoid the SQL injections, you can you can obviously do this, right? Whatever. Uh, give me a name, Bob. All right. Is there a Bob? There is a Bob. Damn it, Bob. Okay, let's just choose another name, John. Damn it, John. Okay, let's okay. Let's choose an Arabic name, Ali. Okay. Okay. Uh, and and one. Okay. So you can do this, right? That's that's fine. Okay, you can also. Put variables here, but that's actually bad practice because of SQL injection. People can write stuff, right? If you if you asking users for input and then they take your input and they play with like they do like a select and then they do a comment, then SQL and they they drop table employees, they can actually drop your table, right? SQL SQL injection are bad. So this beautiful uh, PG psycho, the psycho uh, thingy here. Is actually pretty cool with this it actually can gives you like this execute can be as a parameter so what you can do is just use uh, star s okay 
and do a tuple here and then put your variables here and they will be safely distributed in this and they will be sanitized they will take care of all that stuff for you so you don't have to worry about it okay let's put my name all right so we're gonna insert here and then we're gonna see let's run 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 and we can see the name right we can see now Hussein is added okay let's go to the database and let's refresh do we see Hussein here where am I guys where am I I don't see myself here do you and can you guess what happened here what happened is since I am in a transaction in a session you did not tell PG psycho to actually commit your edit you said hey I'm gonna make an edit and then bleh, you exited you didn't say anything you didn't say roll back you didn't say comment okay so you actually have to commit your stuff after you're done okay so what you do is basically you do connection dot commit you, you commit your connection okay so commit your changes we didn't have to do that with select because we're just querying but if you're doing insert you want to commit your changes do, do that all right obviously so you have to be careful with your atomicity and, and consistency here i made a lot of videos about databases reference it here hopefully you can see it in the cards i'm going to put it in the description like we, we talk about a lot a lot about software engineering by example in this channel if you're new here just just subscribe guys like hit like this video we're going to teach you a lot of coolish stuff okay commit the transaction Let's commit the transaction, my friend, and then let's let's see what will happen this time. Okay. If I run it again, I don't see any difference. But if I yes, I see Hussein. I see Hussein now. What happened if I run again? Who can guess what will happen if I run again? Boom! Just like that, we got an error. And that's a beautiful error. We like this error. We want to see this error. This error keeps us consistent. This error keeps us alive. This error keeps us safe, guys. Okay. Okay. We have to stay safe. Okay. This error keeps us safe. It's like if, it is, if this is a bird box, this is essentially your blindfold. Okay. Right. Okay. So don't, yeah, use it. Okay. This is the, essentially the indexing. Okay. Uh, it's pr pr primary key, right? That's what happened here. We just tried to insert double thing. All right, guys, I think that's it. Uh, that's it for this uh, very brief, really, video. Just to tell you about the basic stuff, how to use PCYCO to connect to the database uh, from Python. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to this channel to learn more about programming, software engineering topics. We don't only, not, we all, we not only do coding, we do a lot of kind of stuff, like we explain very technical software engineering topics to become a software better software engineer consider subscribing to ig arm trade all right and this is your host hussein nasser signing out stay awesome guys